In this video we're going to install MongoDB onto a Windows machine and we're going to be using this within our Node application and what MongoDB is, it's, it's a NoSQL database which is quite different from a traditional relational database like MySQL or Postgres. Um, it doesn't have tables, it, it uses what's called collections which are kind of equivalent to a table in, in a regular SQL database um, but you don't have to hard code the schema um, it's very fast very scalable because of that because you don't need to hard code things uh, like you do with with traditional databases uh, I would definitely suggest coming to mongodb.org and looking through the documentation uh, there's a lot more there than I can teach you so I mean this here is a good uh, a good definition of, of what MongoDB is. So it's a document database and like I said collections are sort of equivalent to tables and documents are kind of equi equivalent to a column. Alright so they're basically uh, JSON objects. They have name value pairs. Alright um, MongoDB is very high performance. Embedding makes reads and writes very fast high availabil availability and of course uh, easy scalability All right, so there's what's called sharding which distributes collection data across machines which um, we're not really going to get into that uh, this is kind of a, a beginners um, tutorial to MongoDB and the data model like I said it holds a set of collections a collection holds a set of documents all right, and like I said, a document is a set of key value pairs. So enough on what it is, let's get it installed. So I'm on Windows, so I'm going to go to Downloads and click Windows. All right, and it's going to give us this zip file, which I already have, so I'm not going to download it again. Uh, and I'm going to go to that zip file. And if we open that up, you'll have a, a folder like this and you click in that and then you'll see this bin folder with some other um, readme files and, and such now there's no windows installer like there is for node so these are the actual files we need to use so i'm going to go to my c drive and you can put these wherever you want um, i'm just going to put them in the root of my c drive in a folder called mongodb so I'm going to open up that folder and we're going to drag this these files into it. Now before we do anything we need to create a couple folders for MongoDB. The first one is going to be our data folder. So we want to create a folder called data and inside there we want to create another folder called DB. And this will hold all of our database um, information, all our database data. Next one we want to create is the log file. And that's just where all the logs will go for MongoDB. And these are not the default locations. The default for Windows, I believe, would be right in the C drive, but I want them in the MongoDB folder. So we just need to specify that when we when we access uh, the MongoD program, which is in the bin folder. So MongoD and Mongo are the two that we'll be using. So let's go ahead and open up a command line inside of the bin folder we can right click and do git bash you can also use your standard windows command line uh, so what we want to do here is we want to say mongod and there's a few things we need to do here um, we need to uh, manually define where our data and log folders are. So the first thing we need to do is say uh, directory per db whoop, per db and we want to say db path and then the path to our db data folder. Now there's something really important that you need to know if you're using this git bash program. Um, if you're using Windows command line, the standard command line that comes with Windows, you want to use um, backslashes. All right, so you would say Mongo DB um, forward uh, backslash whatever. If you're using this Git Bash program, you want to use forward slashes. 
uh, this is the Unix style uh, path and when using this git bash program we're pretty much using Unix syntax so it's very important that you use forward slash in this program and because that really stumped me um, for a whole day I, I couldn't understand why it wasn't connecting success successfully and it was because it couldn't find the folders because I used um, backslashes alright so now that we get that out of the way we can say uh, mongodb whoops see there I go slash um, data slash db alright and that is this folder here or this folder so we want to do the same thing with the log path so we'll say log path um, C let's see mongodb and log and we want to define a file so we're going to call this mongodb dot log and you can name this whatever you want okay it doesn't even have to have a log extension. You could use uh, anything. All right, so the next thing we want to say is log append so that we don't overwrite our logs. We just append them. And then we're going to say rest so that we can use rest services. Uh, and that's, that's really it. If we click that, all output going to our log file. That's good. Let's make sure that it was created. It was. All right, so all our logs will go here. Uh, so basically, it's waiting for us to connect. Okay, so let's open up another uh, command line. We'll open it in the bin folder, and we want to type in Mongo. And now we're connected. Okay, we can now uh, we say show DBs. We should get local and we're connected we can we can start creating collections we can add data we can do all that but before we do any of that uh, right now how we have it we have to manually start this when we want to use mongo all right so if we get out of this with control c same here and then we say mongo again it's not going to connect we get a connect failed so what we need to do is install mongo DB as a Windows service and that's very easy to do if we just go and click the up arrow and we want to run this again except we just want to tack on install to the end of it so what that did is created a service for us it says service can be started from the command line using net start mongodb so let's go ahead and do that All right, so it started successfully, and you can see it's not wait. It's not waiting. Uh, we can go ahead and keep typing commands. We don't even need this open anymore. And to verify that it was added, we can go to the win the start menu, and say services, uh, and then click on this services right here with the with the gear icon, and scroll down and you can see our service is right here mongodb it started it's gonna start automatically so that way we don't need to do anything to start mongodb we can just connect so we're gonna clear this out and type in mongo which will connect to our mongodb now we want to create a database called kbase because by default we're connecting to a database called test and we can do that just by saying use kbase and it's as easy as that to create a database. Uh, everything is just simplified in MongoDB. If you're used to using a relational SQL database, then this will just show, blow your mind how easy it is to do things. All right, so we switch to KBase. Now what we want to do is we can say show collections. And remember, collections are kind of like tables. Um, and all we have is just system.indexes, which we don't pay any attention to right now. So to create a collection, we can say db create collection, and we'll create a collection called articles. 
All right, so if we get that OK one, that's good. Now if we say show collections, we can see that we have an articles collection. Now we can perform queries on this collection. We can insert, update, read, and delete um, entries or articles. So let's create, let's um, let's add something to it. Okay, so we'll say um, db dot articles dot insert. All right, so we can perform an insert query like this. All right, so we want to say title whoop, title we'll just say uh, test type actually we'll say foo alright so that's the title put a comma and we'll create another field which will be body and we can do create these on the fly we don't have to uh, we don't have to define them in any way we can just create them as we go uh, so body Just say this is a test body. Uh, unexpected token. So db dot articles dot insert. Oh, I'm sorry, we have to wrap this in in curly braces. It's basically JSON. Well, all right. So if we get nothing back, that's good. Um, so what we can do now is say db dot articles dot find and that'll show us everything that's en that was entered which is our foo article and we can also format this a little better uh, if we say find and then do dot pretty that gives it to us uh, nice and neat so let's let's add another article and of course this one will be called bar say this is another test body so we'll do find pretty and it gives us our two entries now we can find specific articles by a specific field if we want to we'll say uh, find actually we're gonna say find one and then inside here we'll say uh, title we want to find the article with the title of foo. Uh, I'm sorry, we have to. <laughs> I don't know why I'm forgetting to wrap these in curly braces. All right, so then it prints out that one entry, which has foo as the title. All right, so we've done a create uh, and read, so let's go to update. So we can do this with db.articles dot update all right so inside here the first parameter is going to be what which which one we want to change all right so we want to change title whoever has a title of foo all right and the next parameter we want to put a comma and make sure you include these curly braces the next thing we want to do is uh, set it we want to set so let's rename it let's rename the title um, so we'll just do our curly braces and we'll say title title is going to equal foobar all right and then we have one last parameter so we want to do a comma and inside our curly braces we're going to say upsert is true and what this will do is if if it can't find something with the title of foobar then it's gonna create a new one alright so that's what this what this does here so let's run that we got nothing back which is good and we'll call find pretty and let's see title foobar ID title bar alright so that doesn't look very pretty. <laughs> uh huh. All right, so it looks like the body was also uh, removed when we did that. So let's go back here and put a comma here, and we'll say body.
All right, so we just added the body as well. Okay, we have to update that. Now, we don't have to follow a schema here. Our articles have a title and a body and an ID, which is an object ID. But we can add, let's add a new article. It'll probably be easier just to type, but we'll say insert. We'll create another article with the title of foo, and then after the body, let's put a comma, and let's say category, and our category will be web design. And let's show, find pretty, and you can see that this article now has a title body and a category. So you can see how much freedom this gives you. You don't have to hard code uh, title body category if you just want to add a category to one entry alright so that's what's great about MongoDB and I'm not going to be a MongoDB fanboy and say that you should always use this because there's definitely uh, situations and, and different programs where you would need it would be a much better choice to use something like MySQL so this isn't a, a, an, an end-all solution alright so now that we've done create read and update of course we need to do a delete or remove so we'll say db dot we'll say db dot articles dot remove and we'll say we want to remove where title is equal to bar all right and now the entry with the title of bar is now gone. Alright, so that should do it. Um, to recap, we downloaded MongoDB, we installed it and defined our data and log directories, and then we uh, installed it as a service, and we went in and created a couple entries, uh, we did some basic CRUD operations, and that's that. So. We won't be doing much more with MongoDB in the command line. Uh, we're going to use the third-party module Mongoose, which, which we installed in our Node app, and we'll be dealing with the database through there. Um, I don't know if we'll do that in the next video because I kind of want to get into routes a little bit uh, and, and just create some new routes uh, for our application, but eventually we'll be dealing with the database through Express and through Mongoose.